You know what? I don't even know how, how to intro this because this, this, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm like, I'm giddy as fuck right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie because this, this is, it's like a perfect storm of things because I, I feel like it's, it's perfect because this is like the official first time I'm doing this live. Gotcha. So I've done 73 episodes, mm-hmm. and, you know, and it's been with my friends, but they're in all parts of the country. So, right. We, we, we do like a Zoom like setup. Right, right. And we just sit and right. chill. But it's like for my first live podcast, there would be absolutely no one better that I wanted to do this with than my big bro. I appreciate right? that, bro. Right? So for those out there, I, y'all, y'all know I talk about this man all the time. And this is y'all first time actually seeing him. I talk about Mama Nims. I talk about how good this nigga can cook. Uh, I told you I'm gonna say nigga all the time. <laughs> so I talk about how good this nigga can cook and just all the stories about my my music days when I was as going as JB Real and COG. That's him. So all throughout the years, it's been 16, 16 yeah, years. Around 16 years, yeah. 16 years. The time just fly by, bro. And and we've worn so many hats during that time. And the way that we continue to evolve, it's like you've been a huge inspiration to me. So I guess I'll intro it that way. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Dante Credo here on the Talk My Credo podcast. I'm your boy Dante Credo here with my big bro in the building, CEO, rapper, author, award-winning recording artist, father, husband, just my nigga. <laughs> All around, overall, my nigga. You can call him COG, you can call him Chef B Samai, but my nigga. <laughs> That's my people, What's man. What's going on, What's man? going on, folk? What's going on? <laughs> it is, like I said, it, it's a blessing to have you, man. It really is, because, yeah. like I said, just 16, 17 years ago. Yeah, and look, and not to mention... We're from the same hometown, yeah. little itty bitty yeah. small town, and never met. Never met. Never met. So I'll tell the story there. Like, we first met, because at that time we both were recording artists and we both were, were doing our thing. And so we met at this random, this random church in Garner, North Carolina. Now that's four or five hours away from my hometown in little old Shelby, North Carolina. And... He did his thing. I did my thing. And then, you know, just out of respect, because one thing in, in that realm, and that's just any realm, honestly, and I'm experiencing it now in, in the podcast realm, you want to be able to show respect. Right. And you want to be able to, to be friendly, if you will. Just right. show love. Do what you do. Focus on yourself, but also show love. It's, it's not really a competition unless you make it a competition. Right. Besides, the only person you're really in competition with is, is yourself. yourself. And, and so it's like, so we've never had problems showing love to people. And it was just, our problem was we were just so good that people had problems showing love to us. Boom. <laughs> and so. what it was, was it was like this instant understanding that, okay, here's somebody that is putting in the work on my level. Uh-huh. You know, and that's that's where it really was. Yeah. It was like, OK, so the, the mutual respect is, you know what? And again, not competition. But let me find out. Let me let me let me let me yep. see what this brother's about, yep. because, OK, something's different about him. Yeah, I know what I do and I see what I do in him uh-huh. because I see the other cats doing it. And they on their way to the Waffle House. Right. You know, and we're headed back to see how we can improve. Exactly. Okay, we're going over notes. What could I have done better? You know, things like that. Yep. And that was pretty much how it started. And I was like, yo, so where you from? And you were like, I'm from Shelby. I was like, man, get the fuck out of here. I was like, man, I'm yep. from Shelby. He was like, why are you playing games, man? Like, you trying man, to be funny. Come on, man. Because I didn't even I didn't even tell you Shelby at first. I was like, man, you know, I'm I'm right in Charlotte. You know, I was like, yo, yep. I'm like, I'm I'm in Charlotte. And he was like, what part is? I was like, well, actually, I'm outside of this. It's a small town called Shelby. He was like, man, I'm from Shelby. Yup. I was like, yup. 
nigga. Right, nigga. <laughs> Lineberger <laughs> Street, what up, boy? <laughs> so, and, and, and that was the crazy part of uh, about it because, like you said, it was literally like a game recognized game. Right. Tight respect. Right. And then, you know, we got to chopping it up. And then, literally, from then on, it was like, yeah. Like that. We like family. Yeah. Family. And it was, and it's been probably whenever I talk about my friends, because I, I, I'm honestly proud to say I don't have a lot of friends. Right. Know, because, you know, maybe associates, acquaintances, but. I don't, I don't trust people who say they got a lot of friends. I, honestly, I don't either. That means you are a people pleaser. And when I say people pleaser, look, look, I treat everybody with respect. I give everybody an opportunity to show me who they are. Right. Facts. What I will not do is change who I am to pacify someone else's insecurities. Right. I refuse. Exactly. And that's the thing that. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm proud to say I, I don't have a lot of friends because, you know, this, I, I, I take that, that term seriously. Right. And exactly. And so I, I take the term friend, you know, just, just very seriously. So like, if I can see that you're a friend, that's someone that I know that I can depend on for whatever and vice versa. And there's a, a special type of loyalty there that isn't easily broken. Right. And it is one that honestly, you really won't know until it stands the test of time. Right. And we, we've had instances where, you know, we were seeing each other every day. And then we've had instances where we may not see each other for a few months. Right. But I mean, when you started your family. Right. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know, at the time, you know, you were single, no kids, mm -hmm. you know. And there were times when, hey, man, hey, bro, let's get together. I got some stuff. Right. Hey, I got some stuff I got to work out. Yeah. You know, I'm working night shift, 12 hours. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get there. Just we got to schedule it. Yep. Now, <laughs> you know it better than me now. Yeah. You know. Yep. <laughs> Those same kids are grown now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's that's just crazy to yeah. think about. But I look at those different things of, of how life has changed around us. And the fact that that's still my nigga right there. Yes, sir. No matter and what. It's like, you know, like kids that I remember were literally up to my knee babies. And them niggas are taller than me. <laughs> and I'm like, them niggas are taller than me now. And I'm like, what's what's happening here? Yeah. But you know, I'm I I just can't help but and there's just very few people I just sit back and I just think and I just get proud. Like I'm proud of having that person right. in my life. Right. And and you are definitely at the top of that list because the motivations of things I've had to do, the things that I do, came from watching you. Man. And you know, I now I tell you this all the time, even off camera. Just this is true. how much I appreciate you, yeah, and how much of an impact you had on my life. Because it's like whatever dream that you had, it was let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And it, it's never been, and for me, it's always motivated me because I've always been in that in that rut of I gotta figure things out first. I gotta I'm I'm overthinking things. Yep. Like I, I'm thinking, oh, well, I, I got to figure out every single thing. I got to dot every I, cross every T. And I look at you and you're like, well, I don't have everything figured out, but this is what I want to do. So I figured out as I'm doing it. As we're doing it. And I'm like, okay, get off your ass and then do it. Because yeah. if you could figure it out before you start it, you, what's the point in starting What's it? the point in starting You already got to figure it out. Right. Like, do you really think the person, like when Henry Ford uh -huh. created the automobile? Yep. The only the only example he had was a horse and carriage. Yeah. He didn't have anything else. He had to fail. Right. Or what some of y'all niggas call failing. Right. I call it test run. Uh-huh. It's a test run. Yeah. You run a recipe, it ain't always gonna come out the way you you want it to. You tweak it a little bit. Uh-huh. You have a song. That's why they have a, a button and you can go back and erase and, and copy over it. Because that's just you just have to start. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever it is you're trying to do, just start. Just do it. Just start. Before you yep. know it, you'll be 50 something years old still talking about when I get this this way. Yeah. And you know what I've said for many, many years. For many years, yeah. Them wait till I get my money wait right now. Wait till niggas. I get my money right, niggas. Yep. And I can't stand you wait till I get my money right, <laughs> niggas. I hope you <laughs> niggas is looking right now. Listen, let me tell you, punk ass something. <laughs> Man, look. 
<laughs> Sit your punk ass down somewhere talking about wait till I get my money right. If you could get your money right, you wouldn't need whatever it is you, you're trying to do. You wouldn't need what you're trying to do. Let's be real about something. Uh-huh. Let's be real about something. Yep. If, if, if I go down the street and I buy a lottery ticket and mm-hmm. I win $125 million in the lottery, yep. guess who ain't working on a food truck ever again? Period. Uh-huh. Yes, I would, you know, I'd expand my season in line. I'd have a, a brick and mortar the way I wanted. It would right. be just the flyest place in the triangle area. Right. However, my kids would be running it. Yeah. I'm going on vacation, bro. Uh-huh. Holla at your boy. I'm at the beach. Right. You know, it just is what it is. That's what's the point of working if you're not going to enjoy it. Exactly. You know, yeah, I work my ass off, but. It's so that I can get to a place where I can actually enjoy some of life. I refuse to be 69 years old standing in front of Walmart talking about welcome to Walmart. Get your shit and leave. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And um, excuse me, sir. Let me check your receipt. Let me check your receipt. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was like, uh, it don't matter because whatever I got, are you going to catch me? I'm going to run it out this bitch. Like, look, <laughs> <laughs> look, look, the sad thing be, the sad thing be. <laughs> You're looking at a receipt for the one thing that's out of the bag. You don't check right. the bag. Right. So the stuff that people steal and they put in the bag. Uh-huh. You idiots. <laughs> God almighty. God well, almighty. I'll be like, all right, I'm going to give you this. And while you are going through this receipt, I'm, I'm, Boom. I'm gone. Man, look. I'm gone, nigga. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm not condoning stealing anybody. Right. Right. Now, now, now. I'm not condoning stealing. And we're not even talking about us. We're talking right. about stuff we heard. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We from Shelby, you know, so, you know. Right. Yeah, you know, that, that's just the thing that we've seen. We're a product of our environment. There it is. There it is. There <laughs> so, it is. So, j- just, just give, just, I've probably given probably the best intro I can give, but just out of, out of the, the boss's mouth. The owner's mouth. Just tell some of these people because th- th- they've heard so much about you. Because I talk about you all the time. I promise I have. And and Kristen says hello by the way. What up, and, girl? Uh, That's my people right yeah, there. Yeah. So um, I was like, the problem is I'm gonna need you to move your ass to North Carolina so so we can start doing it like this. Right. But right. it's it's all good. She, she she's in Greenville, South Carolina right now. And uh, damn near Atlanta. I, I know. So it's like you know. I was like, either way, if I'm gonna figure out somewhere like all right, if I gotta come to you to do this, then, then, then we're gonna right. Work. It is what it so, is. So, but uh, but she's like, make sure you tell him I say hello because I was telling her about on air, uh, the the experience I had at Aristotle. Oh yeah, spirits, and I was just telling yo. Her, just, shout out to Aristotle yeah, spirits. Shout out Look, to Aristotle. If you in the Triangle area, head over to Garner, North Carolina. Hit up Aristotle spirits, man. Listen, let me tell you something. This liquor, yeah, liquor. I'm talking uh-huh. about. I got hair on my chest and it put hair on my back. <laughs> listen, <laughs> bro, this the good I, stuff, man. I, I, I told them I was like, listen, like you know, I'm I'm not necessarily a heavy drinker or a, a liquor connoisseur, right. but in, I've never tasted anything so smooth to where whatever flavor it was, everything hit, and it hit, and it was just like all right, I told them about the 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 habanero, yeah, vodka, yeah, and. And Kristen was like, you know, I've never vodka. I was like, I know. Like right. now, now, now me, I, I'm not a big pepper guy either. Not eat peppers, but you know, I'm not a, right. a big pepper guy. But I'm telling you that that habanero vodka was the shit. Yeah. That, when it, he when he brought it out to us and was like, yo, I just want y'all to try this new thing. I got this habanero uh-huh. vodka, and I was like, that don't even sound right, bro. We black. We like fruit flavors, right? You know, yeah. But bro. <laughs> Mix it with some of that Mama Nems lemonade, bro. Uh-huh. Yeah, it, yep. bro. And yeah, and when we did that, yeah. See, see, that that's the dangerous part right there. Yeah. Like because I knew when I did that, when I mixed it with Mama Nems lemonade, and when we gonna talk about this, man. Yeah, I know y'all. I, I know y'all just following along, and and just just bear with us because it's my brother here. You know what I'm saying? It's my brother. All right. So when we mix it with that Mama Nems lemonade, I felt like okay, this is gonna get me in trouble. Yeah. For two reasons. One, I got to drive tonight. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. So because the just the way that it just mixed so well, right. it's deceptive. Very. To where to where you 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 would think is maybe a spiked lemonade. Right. You know, and like, you know, spiked lemonade, you can go through a whole a whole case of 12 and you you be good cuz it's right. not a lot. But I'm like, it's almost like a spiked lemonade, but no. 
It's that after kick, and you be like, oh, what? There it is. Yeah. Shout but out to Jake over at Aristotle shout Spirits. Shout out to Jake at Aristotle Spirits in, in Ghana. So if y'all in the area, man, y'all check this guy out. Like, it, his, his product is amazing. Yes. Amazing. And, and, and uh, not to mention, aesthetically beautiful. Yeah. Everything they do is yeah. just like, everything they do fits our mold. Uh-huh. It's do it with excellence. Yep. Do it with care. Do it like, don't do it like you're on your way to something. Do yep. it like you're already there. Like you're there. already there. Facts. You know. Big facts. You know, because you know, you know me. You know, mm-hmm. how, you know how I've always been. I don't need nobody to feel like they're doing me a favor. Right. I don't need nobody to feel like they're doing me a favor. I'm not saying that. And people people hear that and they think that you're being arrogant or unappreciative. Uh No, 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 no. You don't understand. I want you to support me because there's merit to what I do. Right. Because what I provide is of the highest quality. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to feel like you, you know, oh, look at the fella trying to pull himself up by his bootstraps. No, sir. Uh We right here. We right here with it. We right here. And yep. I'm gonna give you better than I. I tell you what, and you know me. Mm-hmm. If you think you can do better than this, show me. Show I me. I dare you. Yeah, I dare you. Show me. I dare you. Go all the way to New Orleans, Louisiana. Bring the best you got. Matter of fact, tell Bobby Flair I whoop his ass whoop in this kitchen doing what I do. Ass. Tell him I want some of that. All the smoke. All, all the of smoke. it. So, all of it. So tell them who the fuck you is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, check out Mama Nims Food on YouTube. I am Chef B. Samad of Cooking with Mama Nims. I am the owner of Mama Nims Food Truck. I am the owner of Mama Nims Seasoning Line. Uh, I am the host and head chef of Cooking with Mama Nims. Uh, I am the, 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 the owner of Mama Nims uh, Fine Catering. Uh, man, whatever. It is, if it's got something to do with food, it's me. That's me what we do. Um we're building our well. We have built an empire. Now we're just waiting on all the loot to get here. Facts. But uh, we already built the empire. All the things that I've spoken, we are already in full production with everything. So hit us up uh, online. Uh, go to mamanems.com. Get the best seasonings you are going to ever have, and they are low in sodium. I uh-huh. said low, not salt free. Because let's be honest, you got to have a little something. You got to have well, some flavor. A little flavor. You know, I'm a still black. Flavor. Right. Yeah. But we want to we want to battle against the, the high blood pressure, the diabetes, the, the issues that that so impact our culture and our our hood. Right. So I wanted to come up with something. Well, hell, my my blood pressure was high. So I had to come up with something because it was like I ain't giving up flavor. Right. And just telling the doctor that I'm going to die is just, you know, that's not fair to my kids. Right. Exactly. I got grandchildren. You know, I don't want to do that. Right. So we came up with our own. And lo and behold, wow, the whole hey man, the whole menu. The whole menu is got mama them season. It's got yeah. something mama them's. Yeah. So that's who I am. Uh, check out the show. We just uh, finished season one of Cooking with Mama Nims. We got 13 episodes ready for y'all. Um, we're going to show you how to make quick meals that are outstanding gourmet meals. Uh-huh. Go, you know, I'm trying to hook it up. You know, I'm from Shelby. I grew up, you know, I ain't had, we ain't had much. But my mama could burn. Right. And 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 Suge, she would she would put it together. So, you know, mm-hmm. it was always that was how we showed love. Yep. So we want to take things in. And if you go to mamanims.com, check out the menu, you will find our menu is so Afrocentric. Uh-huh. It is literally things that we were eating in Africa that were adapted when we were brought to this country. Uh-huh. And you know they tell you that Creole food it has it they'll tell you it has African, Caribbean, French, Italian influences. Uh-huh. Well, who you think it was that was dragging us over here on them ships? <laughs> All right. All right. A little history lesson. It is what it is. Yep. So, you know, I love to tell people the story of gumbo. You mm-hmm. know, um in Africa we had what was called okra stew. Okra is a very prominent vegetable. Uh huh. In Africa, it's used in so many dishes. Right. And they actually use it as a thickener. Mm-hmm. If you notice, they walk a lot, they eat right, they don't have the issues we have health wise. Yes. But uh, when we were brought here by the French, the French word for okra is gumbo. Gotcha. Uh huh. There you go. There you go. So, who you think they're going to let keep the name? The one that you came with or the one that they. Mm-hmm. Say your name, boy. <laughs> 
Kunta. Uh-huh. No, your name is Toby. Your name is Toby. Yep. Say mm-hmm. your name, Okra. Uh-huh. No, your name is Gumbo. Mm-hmm. That's how it work. It ain't what you like to hear, but you know what, what is it? You know what God love? The truth. Uh-huh. It is what it is. It is what it is. So we take it. There ain't no sitting around, sitting over here crying over this, that, and the other. When 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 we're brought here, we take we take the the things that were wrong to us. We can sit around and mope. We can sit around waiting on a reparations check. Yeah. It ain't coming. It ain't coming. However, mm-hmm. however, there are so many programs. There are so uh-huh. many programs out there that we do get a leg up. Yeah. We do get an advantage with. You know, when you have an opportunity to go to school and they'll give you money to go to school. Yeah. And you take the money and go buy some piece of shit car. Yeah. And drop out of school and now you're in debt. Yeah. Because you defaulted. Dude, carry your ass to school. Go to school. Go to school. I ain't even saying, look, I ain't even saying go get a four-year degree. Yeah. Go to a community college. Get a trade. Get a trade. Learn learn a craft. Get a trade. Bro, I I got a two-year degree. Mm -hmm. And in 1998, I graduated in 1998. My first job, I was making 18 bucks an hour. It was 1998. Uh That's the equivalent of about $30 an hour now. Uh Bro, it was just... And, and to be honest with you, somebody dared me. Somebody yeah. dared me to mm-hmm. go to school. A dude named Anthony Brooks, we call him Amp. Yeah. And he dared me. I was giving him a ride to the school. He said, you need to be over here. I said, it ain't like I can't. Right. He said, well, show me then. Bet. Got you. Two years yep. later, I was the only black dude. Was mm-hmm. The only black male that graduated in that class. 400 something people graduated in different degrees and stuff. Yeah. It's the only black male. Bro, we got to do better. We got to do better. We got to do better. But Everything that, ain't rapping in basketball. That comes to the the stigma that we have in our community that anything that deals with education or intelligence is you trying to be white. You know, the reason they say you trying to be white is because that is insult enough to the hood in you. Uh-huh. To to deter you from that. But what it's really doing is trying to protect their insecurities. And their laziness. Their laziness. And you're lazy. I said uh-huh. it. Your, your asses is lazy. Uh-huh. You don't want to do the work. So you 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 try to, bruh, I moved to Shelby from Florida. And I uh-huh. remember, I remember people picking on me because I took my books home. But I wasn't no punk, so I slapped the shit out of you. Right. You know, I, that was <laughs> right. the dude I was. I was yep. like, you know, I wasn't going to start no fight, but I right. damn sure finished But I was in one. Yep. And it was like, yo, my moms didn't play that. Uh-huh. My mom's, you know, my mom's, my, my first school was Nation of Islam. Mm-hmm. Mosque number 30 something in Newark, New Jersey. Don't yeah. even play with me. Yeah. And that's how we were taught. We were taught that the, 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 the weapon you need to fight back against your enemy, uh-huh. AKA white people. Mm-hmm. All white people are not our enemy. Uh, I'm not, not saying right. that at all. I'm right. telling you what I was taught in 1976. Uh-huh. Relax. Mm-hmm. But, the, the ammunition that you needed was in books. Mm-hmm. That was how they beat us. Yeah. They created laws. They created what the reason they could beat and kill us because there was laws that allowed them to do it. Yep. We're still fighting these battles today. Today. And the problem is, is that, yo, dog, okay. I probably would have been a great lawyer. I'm pretty good at debating. You know, I'm pretty uh-huh. good at that. And I'm good at throwing some facts in somebody's face because I just love to show your ass you wrong. Right. But I probably would have been a good lawyer, but mm-hmm. it wasn't in the cards for me. Yeah. However, there are a lot of young men out there. They could be lawyers as well. And the best they have to show for it is that they'll whoop your ass in a space game. Yeah. And they can talk more shit than anybody. Right. And that cat right there, the dude that does that, the dude that can debate that, fee- that young lady out there who no matter how hard you try, you cannot win an argument. Yo, we got to get her in law school. And the thing is, yo, Eagle Pride, baby. Uh-huh. North Carolina Central, their law students go to Duke University to, to get their degree. Uh-huh. All right? They're taught by Duke professors. Facts. Look, it's out there for you. You just have to have the determination and the heart to go get it. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of the excuses, bro. I agree. Yes, the shit is not where it's supposed it's to be. It's not where it's supposed to be. It, it's, it's not even fair. And it won't and it won't be fair, but that is that that those are the cards that we're given. Right. Where where it's like, okay, <clears throat> we, we talked about this on the phone. And we are lazy. Let's just be honest. 
We are lazy because there, there's there's two places where we keep our eyes fixed on and instead of on handling our business ourselves. We keep our eyes focused on <clears throat> the sky and to the White House because we think that our answer, our salvation is going to come from the sky or it's going to come from the White House. So it's either Jesus is going to fix it all or Obama is going to fix it all or whoever is the president or whoever is some elected official or whoever is basically not us that's going to fix it. And all. they end up mad every single elected official. I every don't care single if it one. was Obama, Trump, Biden, Bush, whatever. Yep. They're going to get mad. Let me tell you something. I have flourished under every, under every, what do you call a presidency? Mm-hmm. Under every presidency. Yep. I still had control. Right. I still had control. I told you I went to school in, in 96. Bill Clinton was president. Uh huh. I started making money from my degree. Bush was president. I bought my first house under Bush. Yep. Bought my second house under Obama. Uh-huh. I got my third degree under Obama. Uh huh. Because they kept offering. Yep. They kept saying, "Look, we'll send you to school." True story. I was working as a maintenance tech in uh-huh. a Slim Jim factory. Yep. And uh, there was a, a terrible explosion, and some people lost their lives, and you know. Uh, a lot of people were out of work. Um, they tried to keep the plan open for a little bit. Really what they were doing was finding a backup plan to where to move the operation to. Yeah. As soon as they found something, they moved it. Yeah. Look, man, that's their prerogative. Right. That's their prerogative. There were almost 2,000 employees. There. I think at the time it was like 18, 1,900 employees. And to be honest with you, most of them were black or Hispanic. Yeah. Part of the severance package was that you could go to school and they would pay for it to help you learn a trade to go into another field if you need to. Right. There are no, well, there was one other food processing plant here. I think it's Kellogg's or something like that. Yeah. And um, you could go to school. Four people out of 1900. Wow. Four people. Two of them were African brothers. Uh-huh. I used to see them on campus and, I, and, and we stayed cool. You know, I was, you know, yeah. what's up? I give them some love, you know, because I was like, yo, man. Y'all taking advantage of it. Bruh, they were paying, they paid my tuition, my books, and they were giving me like a little stipend. It wasn't a lot right. of money, but you know, yeah. they paid for my gas and all that stuff or whatever. Right. It's just a little stipend. I got a culinary degree. That was something I always wanted to do. Right. We didn't have a culinary program back home. There was no culinary nowhere nearby. Right. You know, I think when I moved from that area, they had just opened Johnson and Wales in Charlotte. Yeah. So there was no way to get a culinary degree. These people were offering it on a platter. <laughs> they offered me a culinary degree on a platter. <laughs> on a platter. How about that? You see what I did there? <laughs> Bars. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I, it just, it man, it was disappointing to see that, wow, you got this laid out. Look, bro, you could have kept from having to go to another job. They mm-hmm. gave us instant unemployment. Yeah. So, you could have, you didn't have to go to work. If you want to be lazy, go to school and be lazy. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do this. I kept working anyway because the yeah. money wasn't enough. It, it wasn't suiting my lifestyle. Right. You know, and at the same time, we were still making music then. Right. We were making music then. Yep. So it was like, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me see what I can get out of this and, and improve myself. And that's how you have to look at life. Yep. Situations are going to happen. Look, ladies and gentlemen, this shit is, it, not one of you people watching this has ever said that you had a year that every day of that year went the way you wanted it to ever. Right. So bad day is going to be here, bro. What mm-hmm. you going to do with it? It's raining outside. Can't open up a food truck in the rain. So what you going to do? You know what? I'm going to start prepping. There's always something yep. else. Don't just, you know, throw your hand. Oh, today it's raining. So I just, oh, I guess I go get back in bed and do nothing. Yeah. That's the problem. And, and the thing that really disappoints me about us is the fact that we are the walking epitome of innovation. We, we are the walking epitome of make something out of nothing because that's what we had to do from the time that we were brought over here. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's like, you know, now we fallen into these, these pits of looking for someone else to save us. When all throughout history, we have seen that we have saved ourselves because there was a time when we knew that no one was going to save us. Uh So if we didn't do it for ourselves, you know, look, we use we use the good parts of the pork now. Uh-huh. You know, 
We use yeah. the good parts of the pork. You know, there, there are a couple of pork products on our on our truck. Mm-hmm. It's it's the same thing Massa was eating. Right. Okay. Back then we weren't able to do that. So when you get excited because it's Thanksgiving and they making chitlins, uh-huh. look. Regardless of how you feel about them. Right. But understand I ain't the never history gonna behind that. it. Right. I ain't never going to eat that. But yeah. there is a sense of pride in that my people figured out a way. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what? Ribs were never supposed to be a delicacy. They were not supposed to be 20 something dollars a rack. Uh huh. We were fed the innards. We were yep. fed the, in, the insides. Uh huh. What is in what what cage is around the insides? The ribs. The ribs. They would cut everything they wanted off of the pig. Take the hooves. Take the head. Take the tail. They threw all that over there, and they cut everything they wanted off. They had the rib cage, and they threw the whole rib cage out there. Uh huh. Who you think was the first people to take them ribs and figure out how to make them tender? Because let's be honest, you can't just throw them on the stove. Mm-hmm. You got to have some skills. Uh huh. It took skills. And when they find out that we're able to take something and make it good, it becomes theirs. It becomes And it's theirs. expensive. <laughs> I remember growing up in Shelby mm-hmm. and there was a butcher shop over there off of Lineburger Street. And uh, near Ted Woods, though, I don't know if you remember that. You might not be old enough to remember that. I'm a but, man uh, but, uh, Eric, if you're from Shelby, you know Ted Woods store, trust me. Uh-huh. If you my age, you remember it. Mm-hmm. But my mom would send us there and you would, we would have to go around to the back door. Not because of racism right, or like right. that. You would go to the back door and you would ask to speak to the butcher and he would bring out a case of chicken wings. Uh-huh. Chicken wings, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. They were 10 cents a pound. This is 1983, bro. Yeah. I ain't talking like the 50s or 40s or nothing right. like that. This was 1983, 10 cents a pound because we didn't, nobody ate the wing. Yeah. It was used for chicken stock. Uh huh. And mama would go and hook them up. So when the big chicken wing explosion came, I was like, dude, I'm done. I, I'm so tired of that. Yeah. It's like growing up in Florida and, and how everybody eat crab legs now. And I'm like, bro, yeah. man, look, man, let's be honest. Yeah. Crabs are like the roaches of the sea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then cra- crab and, and what, a shrimp? And shrimp. Crab and shrimp. And I'm, I'm still <laughs> eating both. Uh huh. But I'm not lining up. Man, when I see people taking their EBT card, and this is not a knock on anybody with EBT, yeah. but when I see you taking your EBT card, and you spending $35 a pound for somebody to give you some snow crab. We ain't talking about the good crab. Yeah. For snow crab, when you could be feeding your children for the month, that bothers me. Yeah. That bothers me. And then come the end of the month, you don't have enough to feed your kids because you was balling out on that. There's so much other things we can do. Right. And again, getting back to the mama and M's menu, mm-hmm. that's where it all comes from. If, You're making proper gumbo. There is something called gumbo filet powder. Mm. Gumbo filet is ground sassafras leaves. Why the hell would somebody go out of their way to grind sassafras leaves? Because that's what they had available. Because that's what they had, yeah. That's what they had available. And now your gumbo is not authentic if it ain't got that filet. Yeah. Period. Why do people eat jambalaya? Talking about authentic jambalaya. I ain't talking mm-hmm. about that bullshit out of the box that y'all buy that's a seasoning <laughs> packet and your dumb ass think that that's what jambalaya is. <laughs> I'm talking about with actual tomatoes and peppers and onions because this is what was readily available. And it would be the rotten tomatoes. But what do you do with a rotten tomato? You cut off the bad part and you stew the rest. That's how we survived. We and took what whatever we was left and that's what we did. And when I see... Man, shrimp and grits... Shrimp and grits is probably the most expensive thing you see on anybody's menu these days. That was poor people food, y'all. You heard me? That was poor people food. But poor people kept making this stuff so good that the people who who were holding us down, they wanted to know why are they happy? Why is it that we are the only race of people that relate our food with an emotion or a state of being? We call it soul food. Uh Uh-huh. Italians love their food. Mm-hmm. Italians, French love their food. The French invented the restaurant. Mm-hmm. You, you are not a chef. Well, I, I can't say that, but you are considered a classical chef if you were a French trained classical chef. Uh-huh. They don't call it soul food. Why do we call it soul food? Because it was the best that we could ever give of ourselves. That was right. the best we could ever do. So when you roll up on Mama Nims, you better know you're going to get the best 
that we have to offer you. We ain't right. never going to bullshit with you. We're going to give you the best that we can. I always tell my my uh, my crew, the last the last customer gets treated just as good as the first customer. Just as the first, yeah. It ain't no, oh, it's the end of the night, give them what we got left, no, sir. We're going to give them the best because that's what the soul of it is, the love that goes into it. Right, right. Italians love what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They love the family that they're cooking for. The French, yeah. the same. The Germans, the same. Any other people. Why do we do that? It's because it was all that we had. It was all we had. Yeah. We didn't have gold and silver. You know, let, let's be honest. I'm, I'm going to look away from my brother for uh -huh. a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, without looking at, at my brother, mm -hmm. you can look at me if you want. Uh huh. Immediately tell me what is the number one black holiday? Got it? You got it? Now you can answer. Well, I'm going to say, hmm, Thanksgiving. Hello. I don't even know why you paused. <laughs> it, it, that it, is it, our Super Bowl, bro. It, it was for a dramatic effect. Right. <laughs> that is our Super Bowl. Uh -huh. Why? Why uh -huh. didn't you say the 4th of July? Uh -huh. Shh. I, I, don't you <laughs> don't. That is not this podcast. We on food. I was about to go Black Panther. Just don't. Just don't. Okay, all right. I'm cool. So it's not 4th of July. Uh-huh. We like Memorial Day. Eh. But that's more the Black Bike Week, you know, uh -huh. that kind yep. of thing. Yep. You know, it's first book out of the year yep. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, you didn't say Christmas. You didn't mm -hmm. even say New Year's. That's a big party day. You didn't say New Year's. Mm -hmm. You eh, some people might say Easter. But let's be honest, it ain't mm. even for what Easter's for. It's because right. you get to dress up in that, in that lilac uh, suit, <laughs> you know. It's a lilac. <laughs> <laughs> the lilac suit and that 10 pound bucket hat that you got on Yeah, there. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Look. <laughs> It still got the little tag on there. Yep. Don't even have to think yep. you think you think you chilling because you got that tag. Because you got the no, tag bro. on it. No, bro. That's supposed to come off. And get it tailored, by the way. You can get yeah. that taken up. It don't cost but about 12 bucks. <laughs> get, get the shit tailored, folks. <laughs> but you said Thanksgiving, and everybody watching at home, they said Thanksgiving because that is our Super Bowl. You've seen the meme that comes out right before Thanksgiving when it says uh, white people's Thanksgiving. And it's a good Thanksgiving. To be perfectly honest with you, it's closer to what my Thanksgiving is. Uh -huh. It's going to be turkey. Usually they got turkey or ham. We're uh -huh. going to have turkey and yeah, ham. We, we have both. We're going to have both. We're going to have dressing. We're going to have uh, mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese. Okay. I've already gone further than what they go. But, uh -huh. you know, Blackbeard, we're going to have potato salad. We got collard greens. We got uh, green beans. We got the, the best way to describe it. Is the Shirley Caesar meme that we made popular? There it five. is. Greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, ham, hog, and, and Listen, you name it. That woman got <laughs> that woman got forty two gospel albums, uh -huh. and will be remembered for and that. and will be remembered for that one meme. <laughs> Shirley, Caesar. long after she's dead and gone, <laughs> that's what she's gonna be remembered for. Every Thanksgiving, beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chickens, ham, and, and, and that's and, that, and that's that's crazy. Hold on, hold on. What about the part where she says dogs? Oh. She said, "Hogs, dogs." Yeah. I was like, "You name it." <laughs> just, I tried to skip over that part because it was like you know I wasn't too sure. And she say, "Did she say dogs?" And she say, "Mog." I'm just gonna skip over that part. She said, "Hogs, and, dogs." <laughs> I said, "Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa!" I was all in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait a damn minute. Now hold on. Look now. Look. And you could have said shitlings. <laughs> Listen, I was. I want to say something so bad that I know it's going to get us canceled. It's going to get me canceled. <laughs> like, when you said when you said dogs, I was <laughs> look. You remember when Shirley came after me, bro? Yeah, back in the day when I was yeah. producing the show. Oh my god, that's a whole that's nother a whole show. We ain't got show. time to get in there. That's a whole different but, show. Oh my gosh, yeah. But I have met the legend. Yeah. I have met the legend, yeah. and she is a legend. Let me tell you something. It's funny at that time. At that time, you know, I, I was, I was, I was, I was a bit, I was a bit better. I was upset, you know, because uh -huh. I felt I was being attacked. Yeah. Just because somebody was showing something different. Yeah. But, you know, at this point in my life, you know what? I can say, you know what? I've hugged Shirley Caesar. Uh -huh. You know, that is a legend. Yeah. Like, I don't care what you feel about her, think about her, whatever, man. You got to give her respect because yeah. anybody that does something, that does 42 albums. Bro, do you yep. know? Bro, I, I want to say, do you know how hard... Nigga, I know you know how hard. We've yeah. written them. Yep. 
We've done it. That is <laughs> incredible. And mm-hmm. she deserves nothing but the utmost respect. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And sure, let me pull that food truck around to that big old church of yours. Exactly. <laughs> because we know where you are right here in North Carolina. Look, we know man, where you are. I live, I live a mile and a half from her church. Yeah. Man, listen. Right. So, you know, like I said, nothing but nothing but respect. But it you know with Thanksgiving. Getting back is. to where we were, it was it was Thanksgiving because that's that's when we give. Because we know we can give you food at Thanksgiving. We may or may not be able to do much at Christmas. Right. We're going to have another meal. Yeah. We're going to have another meal. But for the most part, we know that the most giving we're going to do, let's be honest, you see more of your family Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Than you do at Christmas. Than at Christmas. That is, that is true. Thanksgiving is black people's. That's black people's Super Bowl right there, bro. Yep. And again, uh, you know, it's something I want to say too. When we have this holiday, we give our very best. That macaroni and cheese that you made three months ago, it's not quite the same as the one you make for Thanksgiving. Right. You you getting the best. You get all the cheese. You got 14 cheeses. Yep. You don't really need 14 cheeses, no. people. Just know how to cook. Right. But nonetheless, I appreciate the effort because right. that's what it's about. It's the effort that goes into it. One thing I'm going to say about something. Black people. My Talk people. Talk to us. Mm. Talk to us. Here we go. Look. Look. Look right here. <laughs> Zoom in. Get right there. Zoom in. Look right there. Uh-huh. When you go somewhere to eat, stop complaining about the price of what you put into your body when you don't complain about the price of what you put on your body. Amen. <laughs> you got on a pair of $300 Jordans and you come to a, a food truck that's giving you the best, the very best. And again, I dare you to show me somebody better. I said it. But here's what? the thing. So, so we'll, we'll go ahead and and introduce this this topic. So here's what we're talking about. We're talking about the support that we have within our own community, the, the way we support each other. And a lot of times, you know, I don't want to say crabs in a barrel, but it's very close. Maybe a notch above crabs in a barrel is the way we kind of look at each other now. Things are shifting a bit to where we are more, we are looking out for more black owned businesses. Uh, and of course you do have your detractors. It's like, well, well, why does it have to be racist? And there's racism. You're only looking at black, but what, what, what if the product isn't good? It was like, well, l- let me tell you this. Those companies that, that are established has been around for a hundred years. They didn't start out good either. They didn't start out the, the best quality but they, they had a support base that, and they kept going and they became the giant that you know them to be today. So no, it, it may not be, and I'm, I'm not talking about you, I'm, I'm excluding you, but just in general, that, that company, that, that hair and nail salon or, or that, that candle business or that, that lawnmower service or you know that plumbing service or whatever the case may be, that, that, that mechanic, that electrician, whatever businesses they may have, is it the absolute best? Well, may, maybe not, maybe, maybe so. But even if it isn't, it's the support that allows them to continue to grow, to continue to improve, to become something more because they had people that believed in them. And when it comes to our community, we listen to a lot of different voices because for whatever reason, well, I know the reason, but I won't go Black Panther mode. We have this fracture within our community to where unity really isn't really achieved. You know, where it's like, the, there, there, there's a meme that I put up where it's like, I am, I'm pro-black, meaning that I am for any and everything that enhances and pushes forward the black community. Right even if it's other black people. So here, here is what we're trying to say. And this is what this topic goes into. When you put your money into things, when you invest your money into things, and that is whether you buy those $300 Jordans, that's whether you buy that, that Bentley or that super expensive car, even though you know you really can't afford it, but you still live in a shitty house. Whatever you invest your money in, it seems that the only time that you are really cognizant of where your money goes and how your money's being spent is when you're dealing with other black people. What do I always say? Mm-hmm. When you go to Walmart, you have yet to say, I'm here to support Walmart. Uh-huh. When you go to McDonald's, you don't say, 
Well, you know, I just want to support. Uh huh. Look, man. Again, we killing the game. We are. It is. There is nothing but quality. Uh huh. And I ain't talking. And listen, just because it's a food truck, understand, bro. It run you about two mil to start a, a brick and mortar in Raleigh and be profitable. Uh-huh. To be in a good location, liquor license, all that. Be about two mil. I've done the research. Before. Yep. And holla at your boy. If you got it like that, let's, hey, let, let's talk. Let's yep. talk because I promise you, we can sit down and I'm a business plan man. Yep. If I come to you, I'm going to come to you correct. I ain't uh-huh. walking up to you with an idea and a feeling. I'm right. going to walk up to you with a plan. Right. Written out with, with real numbers so that you can see where you're going to make that money. So holla at your boy. Uh-huh. Mamanams.com. Bang, bang. Let's do it. However, but... To what the brother, what my brother talking about, we would look another black person in the eye and say, well, yeah, I, I want to support. Can I get a, can I, can, can you knock something off here? When you go to Walmart, you don't ask them to knock nothing off. Uh-huh. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because you know what the answer is. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is that if somebody's giving you a good product, and I'm not telling you that you have to just accept a bad product from anybody. Right. Now, Absolutely. Now, here's the thing. I do understand that Every, everybody doesn't start out at their very best. Uh-huh. But so I knew I wasn't going to be at my very best when I started. So my goal was to make sure I was at least better than everybody else. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Talk to him. So I knew that I still had room for improvement. However, before I even put my feet to the ground, I wanted to make sure that I was able to provide a product that was as good as or better than my competition. Uh-huh. When, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a blessing and it's a bit of a disappointment, but 95% of my customers are white. I love them. Yeah. They yeah. love us. Absolutely. They yep. love us. I'm telling you, they spend good yeah. money. Jake, is the name Jake at Aristotle? Jake at Aristotle. Jake at Aristotle. The coolest guy I've met in a while. Right. Coolest Jake, guy Jake. I've met in a while. And his name Jake. And he his got name like Jake. a cool name. Yeah. <laughs> like. You know, not, not Jake from State Farm, but Jake from Aristotle. Jake from Aristotle. That's what I call him. Yeah. And, you know, this dude has never come to me and said, I mean, this man owns a distillery. Uh-huh. He's doing quite well for himself. This man has never come to me and said, you know, I just want to support black business. He said, you're the best chef I've ever known. Uh-huh. And it, it, I, it, I need you. It's a difference there. It's a difference. It, it's, it's a difference in... In the confidence, in the support, in the encouragement. Right. Because it's not so much of, I'm coming to support you because, well, you know, you may need it. So here's a little something, something. But because I'm here, go ahead and knock me off that discount because, you know, yeah, knock off that discount. No, it's yeah. my opinion of you comes from the service that you provide. Right. It, it comes from the quality that you right. present to me. And it's top notch. Like right. I'm sitting at the owner's table. So there, there it is. Yeah. So Valentine's day, we had this wonderful, uh, I did a five course meal at yep. Aristotle. Yep. Um, it was amazing. Go to uh, mama names.com. Check out the pictures and yo, the, the man, the atmosphere, everything yeah. was so dope. It was dope. Jake sat my brother at his table. Uh huh. He knew that my brother was going to be there. He said he sat at the owner's table. At the owner's table. Yep. Everything was of the highest quality. Uh huh. No one ever looked at me and said, "Wow, what a good, uh, what a sweet black business." Uh huh. They said, no. "Matter of fact, they stood and applauded." Yeah. I got a standing ovation. A over standing some food. ovation over food. Okay. Uh huh. When you come to a black person's establishment. And you will never see me do this. And I never have. Mm-hmm. When I go into a black restaurant, there is an expectation. Don't get yeah, me twisted. There's an expectation. But I, I have an expectation any restaurant anywhere, I go to. Anywhere you go. Right. What I will never do is walk into that place and make them feel as if I'm doing them a favor. Uh, doing them a favor. By being there. <laughs> if, if the food, if, if the service is great, the food is good. Your experience is great. Yep. There's no color to that except green. Yeah. Except green. Yeah. And when people come to my truck, they don't understand. Yo, I've had people, man, my son, <laughs> it was so crazy. We were at this one spot. It was a different distillery down in Benson. Uh-huh. And, uh, man, 
Shout out to uh, Bross Lab. Bross Lab, oh my God. Bro, mm-hmm. there's another one of them. Yeah. But nonetheless, um, it was like really cold and it was raining. And people came out, they made their order, and we 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 were extremely fast. Yeah. Um, order got done, but the gentleman had went inside, he's an elderly gentleman. My son took it in there. Hand him a hundred dollar bill. When you come to my truck and you're trying to figure out how to stretch out 20 bucks, we appreciate it. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. We appreciate yeah. you, your patronage. We really do appreciate it. The thing is, let's not act like we're doing each other a favor. Right. Because you will go out to Bahama Breeze. You know, that that's the black spot. You uh-huh. know? We love to celebrate the Bahama Breeze. Yep. As if it's fine dining. No knock against them. Right. No knock against them. But it I is what that. it is. But it is what it is. It's, mm-hmm. it, it ain't nothing but uh, souped up Applebee's. Uh huh. You know, but that's that's what you go in there thinking like like you're doing it big, and because the expectation again is is different, even as of with us as black people as, as our hangout spots, we're not going to Bahama Breeze thinking. Well, you know, I just want to show up and give you and show you some support. Like you already know, no, I'm gonna show up here because I know the food is good. I know the food is I, good. I know the, I know the good. drinks are the, banging. The drinks are good. The atmosphere is what I like. Right. So even still, even if you walk into a place for the first time, now of of course there is a a a, a slight moderation of you know yeah I want to come and support, but for the most part, the idea or the thinking is well I heard about this place. Oh, I'm curious about this place. So mm-hmm. let's see what you got. Yep. Let, let's see what you got. And then and then that responsibility of it's not necessarily impressed, but to show who you are and what you're about becomes to that owner or of the owner of that of that business. And this right. in this sense, that black business. So sh- right. show, you know, the quality of this, that, and the third. And that's how you win me over as a fan. Right. I get that. There's still business involved, but is when we come into a black business and we look at black business, we automatically almost demote the experience because, <laughs> and we, we kind of already diminished the, 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 the experience is like, instead of starting from zero, we kind of start from like a negative five. So to right. speak, to kind of put numbers in it because right. it's like, well, you know, you, 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 you black. So, you know, it, it, I, you know, I shouldn't set my experience or my expectations that high. Right. And or it, or or we're looking for something to complain about. We're lo- yes, because right. it's something we've talked about many times over the years. When I would discuss, you know, you know who my dude is. Jay Z yep. is my dude. You uh-huh. know, I just, uh, you know, the music's one thing, but you know, just the way that that man has carried himself through life, I just admire it. Uh-huh. You know, when I watch him, Puffy, me and yep. Puffy born on the exact same day. Did you know that? Mm-mm. Yeah, me and Puffy born on exact November 4th. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's my dude. Yes, sir. And, you know, his grind, I've always had a respect for people who make something out of nothing. Right. And you know what I used to tell you? You know, when Hard Not Like Jay-Z was the hood's hero. Yeah. He couldn't do no wrong. Uh-huh. After about that third or fourth platinum album. And he started dating that girl from Destiny's Child. Uh-huh. All of a sudden, he was in the Illuminati. Yep. Because a black man's success must come with some kind of devil worship or something like that. Yep. But you don't say that Elon Musk is in the Illuminati. Right. You don't say that Jeff Bezos is in the Illuminati. You don't say that Bill Gates is in the Illuminati. Uh-huh. You don't even, you, it doesn't even cross your mind. It doesn't mind. even cross your if mind. If a black person manages to come out of nothing and make something. There's got to be another reason. It can't be that he just worked his ass right. off and earned his spot. Mm-hmm. What did he do? He held it down for like, what, eight, nine summers straight? Mm-hmm. And, you know, sorry, dog. That's the way it works. Tyler Perry earned his spot. Tyler Perry? Well, hell, we, hell, they, they're saying Tyler Perry then did something else. Yeah, he yeah. must have did something. Tyler Perry's in the Illuminati. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, wait, you know, Tyler Perry wear a dress and I wouldn't demean myself yeah. like that. First of all, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you demean yourself in the way you live your life. Uh-huh. That's the problem. Look, man, let me tell you something. If somebody told you, if somebody came to you and they opened up a briefcase and they said, this is the first installment. It's $2 million on your first installment towards a billion dollars. Uh-huh. All you got to do is put on this dress and make people laugh. Uh-huh. 
Some of y'all put on a dress already and just don't show nobody. Don't even play. Right. Don't play. Some of y'all, some of y'all metaphorically put on a dress. Yep. Call your kids. Call Oops. your kids. Call your kids. So it is, and with that, there there's two sides to look at. And I, I can understand two sides. One is like, okay, that there is an attack on black masculinity, you know, as far as the black man. So the, the attack on the man. And, and mm-hmm. so Hollywood and things of that nature, they want to do everything they can to emasculate the black man. So, so they just always got to show black man being humiliated. You know, they talk about Dave Chappelle and how he turned down money because he wouldn't put on a dress and stuff like that. So it's like, I get that. I do. Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh-huh. Shut up. So it's like Tom Hanks' first job was a show called Bosom Buddies. Yep. It was on ABC, and he and his uh, roommate on the TV show had to dress like girls because it was an apartment building that only accepted women. So they had to dress like women. I said Tom Hanks. Yeah. Nigga, pay attention. I said Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Shut up. So I am so sick of hearing this. Look, so Robin Williams, uh-huh. even though, man, it was tragic. What happened to that man? Yeah. But he is adored. Yeah. Don't nobody say that he was tearing down anybody's masculinity. Uh-huh. If, you, if you're concerned about your, young, your son's masculinity, get up off your ass and be a father. And be a father. Ed O.G. and the Bulldogs. It's very simple. Now, like I said, it, even if that is the, even if that is the case, what does that have to do with you? So, because so, so like, okay, if, if, if that is the case to where, you know, all, all these different black actors who wore dressed for this particular role and there was an attack on black masculinity and this attack to, to emasculate the black man, how, what does that have to do with you raising your son? But look at here, they pick and choose. Yeah. They pick and choose where, where they want to. Point the finger. Because here's what I think. Because here's what I think when it comes to you know, the other side of that. And, the, and is this thinking why our community calls Steve Harvey a coon? Because Steve Harvey says, I can take, it, it's, it's a part, Steve Harvey, you remember when Steve Harvey and Monique went at it? Right. When, when Monique was uh, going at Netflix and she wanted people to boycott and right. stuff like that. And then she got with Steve Harvey and Steve Harvey was like, you, you got to play the game. You got to understand the game that you're in. Yeah. You know? So it's like, yeah, if, if I got to play the game to, to get what I need to get, I can get what I get and take that right back to my own community and help people in my community that otherwise I wouldn't be able to help right. if I stood and, and, and right. took this other route. Now I'm not saying you're wrong. This is Steve Harvey. Like I'm not saying you're wrong, Monique, but at the same time, you got to understand that there's a particular path to take and there's a way to go about it. And there's it. a way to go about when it. When you when you called out Oprah and Tyler Perry and all them, you did it to embarrass them. Yes. Until you brought it up, we didn't know anything. Right. And you tried to embarrass them. Now, if I got the power to bury somebody who's trying to humiliate me, uh-huh. Grab a shovel cuz your yeah. ass is buried. Right. And when you talk about like the Steve Harvey's of the world. Yeah. Steve Harvey has done some things that I've kind of looked at, but yeah, absolutely. With, with wisdom, mm-hmm. I've come back to understand, man, I'm, I'm not in that man's shoes. Yep. I don't understand that. And you know what? When I see Cedric the Entertainer, that's one of his very best friends. That uh-huh. man ain't never said Jack. Right. Bad about his best friend. Right. Even though I have heard him say he may not make all the decisions, bro, you ain't made all the decisions that I would have made. Exactly. And vice versa. Right. I remember when when we walked away from the music. Yeah. That particular brand at that. Yeah. I understood because yeah. you were killing it. Oh my God. You know, I told you. Yeah. You were the best I ever seen. I had never heard nothing like it. It was like I had three favorite artists. It was Jay Z, Spec, and JB Real. Those was my dudes. Yeah. And you couldn't tell me nobody was better. And I understood because the support that you deserved wasn't, was, was not, was non-existent. Yeah. I want to say it was barely existent. It was non-existent. non-existent. Yeah. It's like, yo, I'm doing everything y'all tell me to do. 
Yep. And yet I still got people walking up bootlegging my stuff. And you you selling more bootlegs than I can sell out of my own trunk. Right. Come on, dog. Yep. So I understood that. So when 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 it came off, it came off a little abrasive. Yep. And you but I didn't come out public. I yep. hit you up. Hey bro, hey yo man, listen, I feel you. I, I'm yep. right there with you. I really am. Sometimes it's best to just, you know what? Go do what you're gonna do. Don't even say a word. Yep. Don't even say a word. Because when you look back at it, the people we were saying it to, it wasn't even worth the breath. So you know yep. what? Why even give people that ammunition against you? Don't even do it. You're right. So that's what I felt Cedric was doing when it came to Steve Harvey. But on the Monique side, it's like, yo, sweetie, you can, you know, a, a spoonful of sugar go a whole lot further than a, than a shovel full of shit. Uh huh. And that was what she was doing. I'm, I'm right there with you. Because here's the thing. Martin Lawrence wore a dress. Yep. You ain't never heard nobody say nothing about Martin. Why? He was established from the Def Comedy Jam days. And he was, you know, Martin was in all of our movies. Yep. Back in the late 80s, early yep. 90s. It wasn't a movie if Martin Lawrence wasn't in it. To this day, I still watch the Martin show. Right. To this day, the sitcom Martin, we still watch it. Religiously. Right. What? And even though he he dressed up like Shanae. Uh-huh. You don't look at Shanae and say, oh, they're killing the black masculinity. Mar the Martin show was as masculine as it was going to yep. be. Yep. Uh-huh. Yo, get the, get the, get the stepping. Yep. It was as masculine as you wanted black masculinity to be. Yep. But the same person that was showing that black masculinity was dressing up as a little hood chick. Uh-huh. Yeah, you starting to realize how stupid you sound? Yep. You're a hypocrite. Because the, the thing, the thing is, is it's even if because here's here's my ultimate opinion on things like that. Again, even if white people in, in Hollywood or has this grand scheme of demonizing and destroying the black man, their opinion of me is none of my business. That right. their their scheme or whatever has nothing to do because if I'm looking at myself as my own savior, mm -hmm. like you can paint me any way you want to paint me. Mm -hmm. But when you come and you see me or you experience me, you know, that's not the image that you may have been portrayed. Now, people are stupid. People may have people may believe whatever they want to believe. That is fine. But y'all opinions of me is none of my business. So if if I play this game, you, you, you gave it the analogy of a, a two million installment on, on, on the way to ultimately a billion dollars. What do you think I can do with that two million dollars? I'm going right back to my community. I'm going right back. The, those schools that need to be dealt with, guess who now got some money to deal with that? Those banks that we that are non-existent in our community, guess who got a, got right. something to do with that now? Right. You know, it's funny how, you know, when you look at the Will Smiths and the Jay-Zs of the uh -huh. world, they, people who, you, you don't know these people. Right. You know, the same, the same demasculization, demasculization that you talk about. Guess what? They're the ones that control what you see from them as well. Yep. The, the, the most truth you ever got to see out of Will Smith was when his wife started that uh, red table. Yep. When she started that podcast and you were able to actually look into their lives. Everybody uh -huh. wants to try to guess and take rumors and say what they know about these people. Yet. Jay-Z and, and Will Smith have paired together to start a financial uh, institution yeah. to help less fortunate people be able to get a leg up. But we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. We want to talk about Jada Pinkett in August. Right. Uh, well, whatever the, we the singer's talk name about, is. We August want to talk, Alcina. We, we, we want to talk about the entanglement. We want to talk about Lemonade. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, we want to talk about Becky with the good hair. Uh-huh. But again... That every day in the year ain't going to be bad. That was as, as public and as bad as anything could be. Yep. And what did both of these jokers go out and do? They went out and sold platinum albums about their life. Yep. You know what? This is, this is fucked up. Sean? Uh -huh. I, nigga, I'm from Houston. Yeah. You, you know. And you know, and, and her and her sister went upside their head. Uh-huh. Oh, by the way, y'all tried to clown Jay-Z for not hitting back. But if a man hits a woman, it but you 
dumb son bitch. <laughs> you fucking dumb son bitch. It, it's just the the, you, the things we focus on. Is, is right. Is, no, he did what he he did yeah. the right thing. He was wrong first of all. Right. Yeah, he was wrong. He accepted what he did, and that was the consequence of being wrong. Right. <laughs> so, but he didn't. He that man would have swung back on Solange. We wouldn't be talking about Jay Z. We wouldn't be talking day. about Jay Jay Z to this day. The the positions that he in. We, we we wouldn't have had a phone conversation about the the Jay Z created and and idea pushed Super Bowl halftime show that we just had. Oh, Jay Z <laughs> selling out to the NFL. Jay Z selling out to the NFL. California love. And we were all crip walking. All crip walking. <laughs> hey hey hey! Guess what? He's a billionaire because he's smarter than us. Yeah. It is what it is. I'm trying to get to his level. Mm-hmm. I ain't saying that nigga smarter than me. Yes, he is, broke ass. <laughs> yes, he is. So, the dude it, is is it, is brilliant, and he knows how to use his influence. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to what you were saying. That goes back. So every time that y'all say Jay-Z sell out or somebody sold out, you know what? Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx is considered the pillar of masculinity. Mm-hmm. I remember him dressing up like a woman. Yep. Oh, what, what was it, Rhonda? He was Wanda. Yeah, yeah, yep. Wanda. Yep, he was Wanda. And I'm like, yo, dog, listen. First of all, it's called acting. Yeah, just, it is acting. The same way that you say they can demasculize, uh, take the masculinity out of a black man. So what you're saying is, is that they're putting masculinity in the men with uh, movies like men to society, Menace to society and uh, South central and boys in the hood and all of the different gangster movies and stuff. Uh-huh. So what you're saying is they're putting the gun in your son's hand because you have no power. Cause you, you have no power to train, to teach, to lead your home, regardless, even if that's what they are doing, even if they are trying to, Portray images that will negatively affect your son and your daughter. Who was who was allowing them to watch the TV? Who's allowing them to watch these movies? Yep. Who, who's allowing them to do like okay? Well, now we look at Dwayne Johnson. We know him as The Rock. Mm-hmm. You you don't see him in anything without his shirt off and him go, walking through explosions and with a, a huge heavy machine gun shooting shit up. But he dressed up as the Tooth Fairy. Not to mention, <laughs> Dwayne Johnson is the number one box office attraction yeah. in the world. Yep. But the majority of our kids, 75% of our kids are overweight. If Hollywood can influence, why they ain't working out? Oops. Why they ain't working out more? So all, all that, all that to, to be said is just whatever the influence they have, again, you are your own savior. You are your own teacher. You are your own leader. You are your own master of your home and your space even if this is the case even if there is an agenda we still have to manage and are accountable and responsible for ourselves so it's and all that ties into just what i appreciate about you is the fact that even in the times where you grew up shit was more prevalent racism and prejudice and all this type of shit shit was more prevalent to where it, it it was around, but at the same time, you was like, okay, everything that's going on around me, that doesn't define me. Th- that, that's not mm-hmm. going to stop me from who I am because the way I see it, I can see it as how a lot of us see it as, oh my God, the white man. Oh my God, they're trying to get, they're trying to bring me down. What am I going to do? Oh, there's a white man there. Okay, yes, yes sir. Just, just don't do anything to me. <laughs> oh, it's like, okay, th- that's just literally another hurdle for me to jump. Yep. And trust me, I'm either going to jump over it or I'm going to run through that bitch. Right. And I'm going to do whatever I need Period. to do to make sure that my life, because I understand that I am not superior or inferior to anybody. And that and that's and that's what uh-huh. it is. What people don't understand is when you understand who you are as a man. Uh-huh. I ain't talking about a black man, a white man, no man. When you understand who you are as a man. As a man, yeah. You have the understanding, the security to know that no one is greater than you and you are greater than no one. Right. I'm not trying to look down on anybody, but I'll be damned if I'm going to look up at them. Exactly. I got out of the Navy. 
I got out my first tour in the Navy. I was it was 1992. So pause. I just want yeah. y'all to understand just some of the stories. Like we done talked about, we done did music, done traveled all over the world. He went to the Navy. He grew up in the nation of Islam. He owned like just. Do, do you understand when I say all these hats that he's wore? I am the Black <laughs> Forest Gump. <laughs> I swear, bro. I told Tish, man, I told Tish, I said, bro, I'm going to write a book. I am the Black Forest Gun. It's like, dude, you can go through, like, from the time I was born, you can go through that yes. history. And it was something that stood out that it was going on in my life. There right. was never a boring time. There was in never my a life. dull moment, yes. But I never forget, man, I come home. It was August 1992. Um, I come home. I, uh, we came back from the Persian Gulf. Matter of fact, uh -huh. we was over uh, in Persian Gulf and came home. Navy sent me home and um, my mom had remarried and my stepdad was sitting on Main Street. He's an older gentleman. Mm -hmm. um, he was almost 70 at the time. Yeah. And I was outside his job and uh, next door to Music City Records. Bo no. Whiteside. Shout out to Bo yeah. Whiteside. Yeah. Shout out to Man, the Whiteside. Yeah. Look, mad love to his family. Passed away uh, not too long ago. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Love that dude. Yeah. That dude, that was another one. That he was he was one of the dudes that inspired me yeah. because he owned the music store on Main Street in Forest City, North Carolina, where uh -huh. you weren't supposed where you to. You weren't supposed to be. Yes. Where you weren't. So it was him and George Miller mm -hmm. on the clothing store next to him. And it was like, yo, you didn't see that shit. You're right. So anyway, I'm standing there with my pop. And I call him Pop. Yeah. And uh, we out there, we just talking and everything. He's like, yo, you know, what direction you want to take your life in? What do you want to do? Blah, blah, blah. And this white lady walked by and I said, hey, how you doing? Uh -huh. And he said, man, don't you look that white woman in the eye? I said, man, fuck that woman. Uh -huh. yeah. He said, man, you don't say stuff like that. I said, bro, listen, let me tell you something. I literally, literally, just hours ago, came back from a war fighting for this country. Uh -huh. And you're going to tell me that I can't look somebody in the face? Right. Bro, nah. Just, and all the things that you just said, it just don't it don't add up. It don't fit right. here. Right. It don't fit here. I never will. And it had nothing to do with her being white. It was the fact that you were telling me that me being polite to someone was disrespectful. W was disrespectful. Yeah. Or you or you you having the audacity or you being uppity enough to think that you're equal to me, that you can Speak to me, even if it's hi, how you doing? Right. You know, so it's like even growing up in those times and here's a, and, and that kind of irks me when, you know, we talk about like the Black Lives Matter stuff like that, which I'm, I'm not a fan of. Like, I think that organization is full of shit, but I think that we look at the things of the past and that's not to say that things aren't happening today because they are. And on this podcast, I talk about it all the time, but my my main goal is it and why I'm I'm also so excited to have you because you are the walking living example of so the fuck what? Yeah. You you are the example of net okay, and right. you know, I, I still got my goals and dreams. If whatever, we we, we aren't given an a, a fair hand as black people in America. We know that. But Looking up to the sky and looking towards another man or, or woman or whoever's in another position of power, expecting a savior is not going to get us out this hole that we in. OK, it's, it's fair enough to say we haven't been put in this hole, but damn it, no one is going to get us out this hole but us. And I look at you and all the things you have done and all the things you have told me and the stories and stuff you told me over the years. And I'm just like, this man has lived five different lives. Yeah. To the fullest. Yeah. Like, and, and it was never a dull moment, even through all the obstacles and stuff that any other man was seeing. Oh my God, do you see the racism? Oh my God, this and oh, and, and that's why I didn't make it. And, and that, that's why I failed. And that, that's why this, and that's why that. If that wouldn't have been this, if I would have been white, I tell you, if I, if yeah. I would, if that would have been a white person or this, that, and the third. But you said, I don't give a fuck what's going on around me. I don't give a Oh. I know what's good. I know what I want, and whatever. If, if I gotta fight through the racial thing, so the fuck what? I'ma fight through it. I'ma get through it because no one is gonna stop me from getting what I know I'm capable of.